Hi, welcome back to Tea and Forget Me Nots. I'm Rachel and today I've got a really fun project for you. So I'm going to be showing you the new gingerbread people mold from Iron Orchid Designs Christmas collection this year. Now I had never done a mold before trying this project. So if you are a beginner like me, you can see some of the tips that I can share with you for the things I've learned and also see that it is pretty beginner friendly. So if you think that's something that you might want to try, then have a go yourself. Now for this project, I did a really cute little sign, but actually I've got so many ideas for what I could do with these cute little characters that I think I'll probably make a few more before it comes around to Christmas in the real time. Okay, let's get into it. Here is the adorable new gingerbread people mold called Ginger and Spice from Iron Orchid Designs. It's got some big characters, it's got some children, it's got a dog, a chocolate, candy cane. It's really cute and very versatile. You could do a lot of different projects with this. The first step when using a mold to make it easier to release afterwards is to add corn starch or corn flour to it. Depending on where you are might change what this is called. I call it corn flour, you might call it corn starch. As long as it's white and powdery, it's probably the right thing. And you can brush this into the mold and then it really helps when it releases afterwards. You can remove the molds before they are dry. And to do that, simply turn it upside down and let gravity help you and it should gently release and come out. You can help peel back the edges of the mold, but it should come away quite easily, especially if you have some cornstarch in there as well. Now's the time to bend the mold into the shape that you want them in before it dries. I got a bit of scrap wood that I was going to use for my shelf and set out the characters so that their legs would wrap over it and used a very professional Lego block to hold up their legs to the right height so that it would dry in the right shape. So hopefully they will dry into that shape so that they will both stick nicely to the wood slice and stay within that shape once they're dry. One of the nice things about these moulds is that it says the quantities that you need of either your solid material or your liquid material next to the objects. So for example, you can have 45 grams or 50 millilitres, that kind of thing. So you can prepare in advance for how much you need to buy to be able to do all of the objects that you want to do. So I'm just adding extra now, even though the actual character is filled in and just adding extra to the top to try and make it flatter because if it's concave then there will be less surface area to attach to the wood slice okay let's do some flattening out very professional flattening out there's also something called a micro rim or a slightly raised rim around the outside of each of the objects. This helps give you a smooth edge as you can wipe away the material around that edge carefully. Very nice and relaxing doing this. Okay, I think we're looking about ready. Let's see how the final one goes. So while I've got my people drying, I'm going to try and not touch them too much or move them too much. I'm going to work out how long I want my shelf to be that they're going to sit on. So I have measured each of them. They are about four inches because I think the widest bit of the arms, they all need to be have enough space so they can all fit on. Now the child might be able to slot under their arms a little bit. I'm going to have to play around with it but I'm going to make the shelf as wide as I can so that I can make it smaller. But of course, once I've cut it, I can't make it longer. So, so we're going for about eight or nine inches. I'm going to cut it and then attach it before these are dry enough to slot on while they're still a little bit wet so that they're a bit pliable and less likely to crack. So I cut my shelf to size. So 
pretty happy with that. I just need to tidy up the edges a little bit with some sandpaper. And then I'm going to paint it red as well, so it's got a bit of contrast against the wood, so it's not too much wood all in one place. So it's a good idea to always sand with the grain. So you can see this grain in this direction just means it's less likely to splinter and break up. So for my paint, I've gone for Barn Red, which is a really bright Christmassy red to give it a nice bold pop of colour. Now the gingerbread people are going to be quite colourful as well. It's really thick coverage. I don't think I'm even going to need two coats for this one, which is great. Then before I attach the gingerbread people to the wood slice, I wanted to put my brackets on the back. So I attached two little hangers and some rope between them. I did this rather than adding one hook so that it would give a bit of flexibility in case one side of the wood slice was slightly heavier and it would be difficult to get it perfectly in place. So by having the rope in the middle, it just means I can adjust it more easily depending on where it's hanging. I then used some Gorilla Wood Glue to stick the wood shelf down. As it was a scrap bit of wood, it was really light, so glue down really quickly and smoothly, which was perfect. Then onto the fun bit of painting the gingerbread characters. So I didn't have a colour that was naturally gingerbread coloured, so I had to do a bit of a mix. I played around with a few different colours for a little while, but eventually was happy with a mixture of mohave, which is a browny yellow, and coffee bean, which is a dark brown, which gave it a really natural looking gingerbread look. Now the nice thing is, for the colour of the outfits, you can really choose whatever colour you like. If you're making this to look like people you know, maybe you could colour it the colour of their favourite outfits. But for this one, I'm going for classic Christmas colours. Fortunately, I had a couple of sample pots that I hadn't used before that were perfect reds and greens. So that is what I went with for the outfit choices. I wanted to get a layer of paint on before sticking them down to the wood slice because I thought it would be really difficult to get a crisp painted line against the wood slice without accidentally painting on the slice too. So I did my first coat of paint and then glued the characters down. I needed a second coat of paint on top, but that was okay because I didn't have to go exactly to the edge of the characters against the wood slice on the second occasion and it still looks good. If you're using something like clay, it naturally cracks. So you have the choice as to whether you wait for the cracks to appear and either fill them in or not depending on your preference, or you can paint them and then see how it looks and whether or not you need to do any touch-ups. In fact, having done the first coat of paint, it made it really obvious the bits that cracked, which is actually quite helpful. There was only one bit, which was the gingerbread woman's neck that had any really significant cracking. So I filled that in with some extra clay so that it would have an even surface. The other bits I just filled in with extra paint and that was fine to hide the lines as much as I needed them to. Then my final step was to add a message to make this a little welcome sign and I had these fake little scrabble tiles. You know when you buy crafty things and you don't really know what you're going to use them for? Well, finally I have a purpose for these cute little tiles. I spelled out the message, welcome to our house. I deliberately chose house rather than home because of course it's gingerbread people and they do like their gingerbread houses. But of course you could spell whatever you liked, you can make it personal to your family name or even say something like Merry Christmas. You could put this on your front door or a shelf or near a Christmas tree. It's a very flexible and versatile sign that you could do quite a lot of things with. It takes a little bit of time for things to dry but really it's very simple, very cute and a lovely addition to some festive decor. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun doing this gingerbread people sign. I already have an idea for a slightly out there project, which may be a bit more difficult to make, but that's going to be my goal before we get there for Christmas. So keep your eyes peeled for another video on that. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye.
If you're interested in finding any more information about the gingerbread mold or anything else I've used in this video, I'll leave it in the description for you. Until next time, thanks so much. Bye.